Hello, and welcome to The Jib. This bi-weekly podcast is about the many and varied schemes of the many and varied U.S. law enforcement and intelligence agencies, organizations, and committees, and how stupid and funny they are. Join us on our merry journey through space and time. Hi, my name is Barry, and you might know me from No Officer, No Gentleman. <laughs> uh, you may know me, uh, oh, I'm Seamus, by the way, and you may know me from The Longest Pub Crawl. Longest pub crawl. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people would know you from the longest pub crawl. <laughs> it's true. All right. Today's uh, episode is called Operation Cyclone. Ooh, what do we got? Cyclone. Uh, is it about a storm? It is not about the weather. No. Okay. Not. Not really. Uh, there is a fascination with what an ex-president does with his time. On the twenty-second of October, twenty seventeen, all five living former U.S. presidents took part in a benefit concert in Texas to raise money for relief efforts for recent hurricanes that struck Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. That is that is the five boys, right? Oh, Jesus. Now, there we have, left to right, uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, George Bush, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Bill Clinton, <laughs> right? <In the> great <laughs> Wait a Who, say that again? Ba sorry, Barack Obama. Oh, Barack Obama. Yes, okay. and, yeah. and, and William Jefferson Clinton. Right? William, yeah. William that's JF. Yeah, WJF, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess that's, awesome. as, that's as close as we're getting to Cyclone in this episode, right? They were at all the yeah. Hurricane Relief concerts. This is supposed to be thematic. I made an effort to try and thematically tie all this together, right? <laughs> when they were in power, these former presidents were responsible for a collection of invasions, bombings, drone strikes, and assorted nasty undercover interference in the internal <laughs> politics of democratically elected governments. These guys? Come These on, there's see some chill. Seems there's so the good chill. guys, I thought, no? See some chill. Come on, man. Yeah. A, somebody up there has a, has a Nobel Peace Prize, too, I think, right? So uh, oh, we should be okay, right? I didn't even talk about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true, yeah. None yeah. of them have been subject to any kind of hearings or court proceedings of any kind, except for Bill Clinton, who faced impeachment over a sexual incident in the Oval Office. Now, well, when I wrote this, it, yeah, that was yeah. true. But now an ex-president, <laughs> Donald yeah. Trump, has been subject to court yeah. proceedings in the last day or two, right? So yeah. this will this will tell you when we recorded this, okay? Donald Trump has just been indicted by a grand jury. Well, well to, to push back, too, and I will not push back just to clear up, uh, HW was a part of hearings, but I don't think anything like court-related. He never got called in, right, for a ran contra Oh no, he didn't. No. Yeah, that was all. I mean, he, he wasn't. So. He was never indicted for anything. He was just a witness. No. Yeah. None of them were ever indicted for any crimes except uh, Bill Clinton, who who faced impeachment proceedings over a sexual incident at the yep. Oval Office. Yep. Jimmy Carter is ninety-eight years old. He is more known to younger people for dispensing avuncular wisdom on gentle television shows and building homes for poor people with Habitat for Humanity, which is great. Mm -hmm. He is certainly held in much higher esteem now than at any time during his political career, right? Yeah. In 2002, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his decades of untiring efforts to find peaceful solutions to international conflicts. Well, okay, so that's two, two, two Nobel Peace Prizes. Yeah, right? I know, right? Okay, so... Eric yeah. Obama and James Carter. Yeah. But yeah. this is what they gave it to him for, decades of untiring efforts to find peaceful solutions to international conflicts, to yeah. advance democracy and human rights, and to promote the economic and social development, right? That's the quote. Right. No one questioned it like they did when Henry Kissinger got a Nobel Peace Prize in 1973 <laughs> for negotiating uh, the war he helped prolong. They should have just stopped it then, right? They should have just said, okay, we can't do this anymore. This is uh, Henry man. Kissinger is also still alive, by the way. Yeah, yeah, fucking um, goddamn. I, I have, my favorite Twitter follow is Henry Kissinger still alive today. Oh, we saw that, yeah. Or is Henry Kissinger dead? Yeah, because yeah. goddamn it, that motherfucker. I mean, I don't like, I'm not, I try not to be ghoulish, but oof. Yeah. Like a uh, bag of skin. Bag of skin, yeah. yeah. Two years into Carter's presidency, in 1979, the Middle East was destabilizing even more than usual, along with most of sub-Soviet Asia. Pakistan was in the middle of a nuclear program, born of a humiliating military defeat to India in 1971, for which reason mm -hmm. Carter leaned towards a strengthening diplomatic ties, which had lapsed somewhat. In Iran, uh, the regime of the Shah a uh, CIA-backed dictator, which will be a whole other episode, by the way. Yeah. The Shah was proving so unpopular that many were turning to the Ayatollah Khomeini to act. And when the Shah was overthrown by Islamic revolutionaries in early 1979, he was protected by the U.S., which refused to extradite him for his many crimes against his own people. He basically ran a fascist police state. 
after the so, so, so we don't care about crimes against humanity what about the people well uh they're only iranians right oh okay carry on if you're watching the news for the last 20 years you know the iranians are the bad guys that's right that's right okay. fucking they deserve it then right yeah, they yeah, deserve fuckers. it yeah after the, after the crippling oil refinery strikes, which were protests against the Shah of late 1978, oil experts were suspended and oil production rolled back, causing a world oil crisis. Towards the end of 1979, Islamist students took a number of hostages at the US embassy in Tehran, which initially caused people to rally behind Carter, but as the hostage crisis continued, support for his overly cautious policy fell. The situation in Iraq... Go. I said that'll happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The situation in Iran was seen as important context for Afghanistan, even at the time. In 1979, an article appeared in the Washington Post titled, The Shah, Not the Kremlin, Touched Off Afghan Coup. <laughs> it blamed the Shah for disturbing the tenuous equilibrium in Afghanistan between the Soviet Union and the West. And they used the, and, and by the way, the only reason I know about this article is uh -huh. because something you sent me on, oh. uh, on the email, Seamus. You said you might like this. Oh, man. <laughs> how great that article was uh, he, he, the article calls it the tenuous equilibrium in Afghanistan between the Soviet yeah. Union and the West I mean my god read a history book right. during 1979 Afghanistan was restructuring itself as a secular communist state with lots of help from Russia the Islamic infrastructure was decommissioned including banning child marriages and other tribal Islamic pra practices right they were taking all that apart and they were building a secular communist country um, and replaced with national so, so, so like they're doing what we should be doing to Kentucky right now. Is that what you're saying? Well, pretty like, much. Child marriages. Pull apart the religious stuff, yeah, and build a secular communist country instead of that. And Russia was all in favor of that. They were completely neutralizing the Islamic fundamentalists, in other words, um, and replaced with national programs for health and education, right? All the good stuff. There was a substantial land reform program, and peasant debts to landlords were abolished, right? Now, a lot of these c countries, when they take over socialists or nationalists, you will find land reform programs would be a part of the deal. We had it in um, uh, Operation PB Success as well when the Guatemalan socialists took over. He did he, he right. nationalize a lot of the land. Yeah, that's just something that yeah. happens under socialist governments, right? Oops, now, in the, in the interests of fairness, there was also a lot of incarceration mm -hmm. of political dissidents and mass killings of also of political dissidents and Islamic leaders. They also killed a bunch of Islamic leaders who opposed secularization and modernization. Right now, of course, the, the, so, so it wasn't all good news with these guys. They were nationalizing and secularizing the whole country, but they did also do this other stuff. The political situation deteriorated to the point where the Soviet Union launched a messy invasion in December. Instead of just supporting the government, they just pushed the army in, ostensibly to provide support for the government. They quickly found themselves mired in an endless series of sometimes unconnected regional scraps, which continue to this day. Afghanistan is known as the graveyard of empires because it has a habit of running anyone who tried to occupy it, including the Greeks, the Umayyad Caliphate, the Mongols, the British Empire, Damn. and the Soviet Union during this story, and later the United States. Uh, That's yes, a lot. It is. It's a lot. Yeah. The efforts of the British Empire and Russia to control that part of the world in the 1800s was called the Great Game, which you can Google and a whole bunch of stuff about. The Great Game? The Great Game, yeah. Imagine it's a country, okay. and it wasn't just about Afghanistan, it was also about Iran. But the Great Game mm. was about the, trying, the British Empire and the Soviet Empire trying to control this part of the world. Okay. And the Great Game, of course, never ended. It just, the First World War reset a lot of it. Right. And, right. and then the United States come on board, right, after the First World War. Because we would have played too. Because we want to play too, yeah. So it's called The Great Game, which you can Google. And if you've developed enough self-loathing, I strongly encourage you to do so. And mostly expressed itself through the First Anglo-Afghan War from 1838 to 1842, the Second Anglo-Afghan War from 1878 to 1880, and the Third Afghan Anglo-Afghan War from May to August 1919. Uh, uh, well, hey, I'm going to stop there right now, Barry. Okay. Uh, we, we, it's time for an uh, ad break. An ad? Yeah. Ad this break. is uh, uh you would need to do it right now yes okay yeah this, this like you know this is becoming a thing I, I don't understand why you don't understand this barry they want the ads here because yeah, people but, ignored uh, in the beginning so they want the ads in the middle okay fine go okay, it. all right all right so are you ready for this yeah uh, does this ever happen to you a country holds resources that are important to your nation's special interest groups, but they've decided to embrace democracy. Oh, no. Better call Jihad. As a rival nation gain control over a country uh, that increases their influence in the region, you are trying to corrupt. Oh, no. Better call Jihad. Look, 
if your need to disabling uh, destabilize power and reset the country's control to a more totalitarian regime that you can have more influence on then you know what you got to do better call jihad they got oil better call jihad embracing socialism better call jihad any reason's a good reason to better call jihad call today back to you barry no, my favorite part of that is embracing socialism. <laughs> Call a jihad. <laughs> How much do they pay for that? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Okay, $10, good. Yeah, yeah probably right. bought, bought me two of these beers. So okay, well yeah. maybe the next time I might get a cut of that. No, you don't like beer. I, there's other things to spend money on than beer. No. We'll talk about it after the show. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad we got that over with. <laughs> Carter, meaning Jimmy Carter, was rolling into an election year. And those, those, that French sentence, I think, with anybody's name is usually a sign of yeah. bad things to come, right? Right, Carter, yeah. Carter was rolling into an election year and knew his response to this catastrophic degradation of the Middle East was likely to determine his fate against the Republican challenger, Ronald Reagan. That guy's going places. I like the look of him. The official CIA name for Carter's plan to deal with Afghanistan was Operation Cyclone and was promoted by Carter's national security advisor, Zbigniew Brzezinski. That man, there is Zbigniew Brzezinski. And I took a while to, for me to figure out how to pronounce his name, because if you see it written down, it's it's just, it's a scrabble mess. But I'm, I assume it's Polish. It's S-B-I-G-N-I-E-W, and then Brzezinski. So Zbigniew Brzezinski, that's him. He's a national right. security advisor, and he, he made up this whole Operation Cyclone thing. So there's a couple of things about him that uh, might be worth touching on, too. Uh, on. So first off, everybody talks about how crazy Mike Pompeo is. Mm. You know, like really Christian, you know, embracing yeah. the whole apocalypse. This guy's kind of the same jib. Is he a Christian as well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, al and also he gave us the uh, wonderful uh, Mika Brzezinski. You know, from MSNBC. Uh, oh. Fame. Yep. Oh, Morning that's Joe. okay. I was yep. not aware. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So not only does he did he poison us by what you're going to share, but he also poisoned us with her. So okay. you know. <laughs> that's the real. It is. Yeah. The real crime is it? Yeah. Everybody can decide which is more of the crime. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. Or you know. Operation Cyclone. I don't know. Okay. You know. You know. You're going to listen to this, and you're going to think, "God damn, what a piece of shit." This is the worst thing he does, and then you turn on MS, MSNBC in the morning, you're like, "God damn it, no, 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 fuck those guys. This is worse." It's all relative, isn't it? Everything's relative. That's it. Yep. Okay. So Operation Cyclone. This involved arming and training a network of native Afghan militants who held a radical Islamic ideology and called themselves the Mujahideen or Jihad Warriors, right? Hmm. The Mujahid, jihad in um, the Quran and in Islamic philosophy is seen by a lot of scholars as an internal struggle to be a better Muslim. And it doesn't involve killing anybody. But these guys had a different interpretation of what jihad means, and the Mujahideen were jihad warriors, and that did well, involve killing people. Well, well, to be fair, whenever they hear, you know, my struggle, most people get upset because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something somebody else used. Shame so. you have to tell me if you're going to say these things <laughs> before the podcast, okay? All right. The CIA funneled everything through the Pakistani Secret Service, the ISI, and the training happened in Pakistan at a, at a, a bunch of military bases in Pakistan. Leaders of various anti-Soviet countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and China, were convinced to donate to the cause. Somewhere between 20% and 60% of the arms sent to Pakistan went missing before they got to Afghan oh, rebels. Jesus. Well, wonder where they ended up. That's something ben Benazir Bhutto was complaining about, and Karachi was turned in the, during this period turned to the most dangerous city in the world because there were so many loose guns just flying around the place. Not, not to imply for any American viewers that a uh, wide availability of guns would cause more violence, but that's what happened. That's, um, you know, when I'm out of bread, I usually just put a 45 on one side and a 45 on the other. You, know, <laughs> you, have, a, you have an American sandwich. <laughs> yeah, 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 just to sit there to hold on to that big steak that I'm eating, you know. So. Okay. Uh, Brzezinski was kind enough to explain Operation Cyclone himself in 1997. This whole bit is a quote wow. from him. We immediately launched a two-fold process when we heard that the Soviets had entered Afghanistan. The first involved direct reactions and sanctions focused on the Soviet Union, and both the State Department and the National Security Council prepared long lists of sanctions to be adopted of steps to be taken to increase the international cost of the Soviet Union of their actions. 
The second course of action led to my going to Pakistan a month or so after the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan for the purpose of coordinating with the Pakistanis a joint response, the purpose of which would be to make the Soviets bleed for as much and as long as is possible. And we engaged in that effort in a collaborative sense with the Saudis, the Egyptians, the British, uh, the Chinese, and we started providing weapons to the Mujahideen from various sources again. For example, some Soviet arms from the Egyptians and the Chinese. We even got Soviet arms from the Czechoslovak communist government, since it was obviously susceptible to material incentives. And at some point, we started- That's, that's a humble brag. It is. Right? Uh, it's also openly admitting a series of war crimes. Right. Um, and at some that's point, we started buying arms for the Mujahideen from the Soviet army in Afghanistan, because that army was increasingly corrupt. Jesus Christ. Mm. Carter's disastrous policy was ruled out even further under Reagan as part of the Reagan Doctrine. There is Ronald Reagan literally in the White House. Now, Americans who are not aware of the history of this thing may be very surprised to see the Mujahideen in the White House. But well, that's Ronald Reagan uh, in, a, in a promotional shot with the Mujahideen to raise awareness in favor of the Mujahideen. And I can't stress this enough, right? The Mujahideen is the guys in this story yeah. until they're not. Many good Muslims guess. from different countries went to Afghanistan to assist with the jihad, and many of these people would later form members of the Taliban and Al Qaeda, including, or I don't know how to pronounce that, is Al Qaeda or Al Qaeda? How do you pronounce that? Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, okay, it means the, the foundation or the basis or the base, right? Al Qaeda, right. including Osama bin Laden, who organized and funded one of these foreign militias. Well, I've heard of that guy before. Osama bin Laden, yeah, yeah, somewhere, he's, yeah. He's, he was a very famous architect in Saudi Arabia. Right, okay. Um, okay. Although the story, like the fly, the floor, yeah. uh, Frank Frank Lloyd Webber was that it? The, the One of those guys, of, yeah. yeah, Frank yeah, Lloyd yeah, Wright, okay. yeah. Right, yeah. He was the seventeenth of uh, a lot of children. He was the seventeenth of fifty kids, I think. What seventeen? Yeah, how many? Well, his dad would have had a lot of wives, you see. Oh shit! Yeah, mm. damn. But, so but you, you're bound to get one right. You know, yeah. those odds, you would think so. Oh. Uh, although the CIA routinely denies that any funding specifically went to Osama bin Laden, yeah. some analysts believe that bin Laden yeah. himself had security training from the CIA. And if right. this is all right, regardless of the personal involvement of bin Laden, the CIA supported the Mujahideen by spending billions of dollars on buying arms, ammunition, and equipment, according to Mohammed Yousaf, who ran the Afghan branch of the ISI during the 1980s. Now, the Afghan branch of the ISI during the 1980s was pretty much 90% of the entire ISI during the 1980s, right? Jesus, the yeah. Branch. In total, the combined US, Saudi, and Chinese aid to the Mujahideen was up to $12 billion, making it one Jesus of the largest Christ. covert operations in history. $12 billion. Uh, hmm. I mean, you could feed half the world's population on that almost. $12 billion okay. would, would keep five years' worth of US aid to Israel going. Um, in ninth, that's a little joke, sorry. In 1989, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Benazir Bhutto, who was the president of Pakistan at the time, told George H.W. Bush, who was the president of the U.S. at the time, you are creating a Frankenstein. Mm. Presumably she meant Frankenstein's monster before the chat. Oh, well, of course. Crazy, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Benazir Bhutto, Benazir Bhutto uh, for people who don't know, was a, a female president of Pakistan. So I don't know if that would be possible in this, these days because it's going to be Islamic. Was she the one that was assassinated later? Yeah, uh, I think so, yeah. Power? Okay. Mm. Um, and now we have uh, another picture, I believe. Oh, sorry. Yeah, all right, not to worry. There you go. There we go. This is the third movie in the Rambo franchise. Now, I'm not sure how secret the secret part of Operation Cyclone was. <laughs> in this movie, Rambo sides with the Mujahideen against the Soviet-backed government. It was a blatant and simplistic bit of pro-CIA propaganda. It made 190 million at the box office, so presumably somebody was watching. Yeah, I I I, I saw that movie. Mm. Did you see that movie in the cinema? Yeah. Do you like it? It was okay. I mean, I was a kid. It was Rambo, so you know. Mm. Mm. The first Rambo movie is really good. Oh, first, yeah. And it's like the first Rambo movie is anti-war. It's very anti-war. Absolutely anti-war, and not just and that. It's, it's quite a complicated <laughs> psychological yes work. It's not remotely bang bang shooty shooty bang bang. Yeah. I mean, there's a touch of that because it's funny. At the end, it gets sure. funny, that shooty bang bang stuff. But at the start, it's quite a restrained psychological profile of a man come back from Vietnam and he's not sure about his place in society. And all his friends Fantastic. are dead. Yeah. It's good. Like, watch Rambo, the first movie. If you have this idea that Rambo is a, a superficial, bangy, bangy, jingoistic thing, do no, it's good. Rambo 3 is a bang bang, shooty, shooty, uh, simplistic, jingoistic thing. Yeah. 
And Which I don't even know if uh, the first movie is just called First Blood, I believe. First Blood. It's not even called Rambo. Yeah. It's called First yeah. Blood. And the second yeah. one's called First Blood Part 2. And then Rambo yeah. 3. Um, but there's no way to parse Rambo 3 unless you understand the Mujahideen are the good guys and we should right. be supporting them. We should be supporting Islamic fundamentalists in Afghanistan as the movie is the central, not the central. It's one of the messages of that movie. Right. right? Um, the Mujahideen were ultimately successful. In, 19, in 1989, Russia withdrew from Afghanistan entirely, leaving the local warlords to fight it out amongst themselves. The Americans took the credit, of course, but as, as we have seen, the Afghan people are perfectly capable of dealing with invaders on their own. And they have been right <laughs> from the start. They dealt they yeah. the British out three separate times, as I said in the, in the first few paragraphs. This resolution, at the, at the risk of understatement, led to its own problems. A series of counterproductive US invention, uh, interventions led to the formation of Al-Qaeda, a terrorist group which flooded into the power vacuums left by the US military actions and similar power vacuums 20 years later led to the formation of ISIS. Operation Cyclone was shut down uh, in 1989, I mean, although further payments of hundreds of millions of dollars were made to the Mujahideen outside that program until 1992, Jesus which you Christ. can um, see if you want in a movie called Charlie Wilson's War. Oh yeah, that's a great Charlie movie. Wilson was largely responsible for yeah. continuing to fund uh, this thing after the Operation Cyclone was shut down. A if good was, comedy. <laughs> if there was a right, single right. person to blame for the current mess in the Middle East who was ultimately responsible for arming, funding and training the Mujahideen that would spin out into a network of Islamic terrorists creating chaos and havoc everywhere, a perfectly reasonable candidate would be Jimmy Carter. Yeah. And that's why when I see people, when I see him being portrayed as this kind of gentle, kind soul, I mean, maybe, you know, but he did kick off Al-Qaeda and fund Osama bin Laden. Anyway, in a 1998 interview, Brzezinski was asked about uh, basically inventing Al-Qaeda. And he said, well, what, this is a quote from Brzezinski again, the, the uh, uh, loose-lipped yeah. Brzezinski. What's more important in world this history? Guy. There he is again, yeah, yeah, thanks. What's more important in world history, the Taliban or the collapse of the Soviet empire? Some agitated Muslims or the liberation of Central Europe and the end of the Cold War? Jesus Christ. That's how these people think. Do you that think? Of Operation Cyclone, that's the end of my presentation anyway. Wow. Good stuff, man. Do you, uh, do you think, though, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, do you think, um, I mean, yeah, obviously the buck stops here, right, with the president, yes. but do you think that uh, Carter, who, you know, honestly was, was somewhat of an outsider, right? He was a businessman at best, not a diplomat, although he definitely excelled at that, you know, various, yeah. you know, um, avenues, but do you think that uh, he was kind of bullied into the situation or bullshitted into it enough that Maybe he was a little bit in the dark of what he was actually doing. He may not have been able critique? to predict the consequences, but you could say that about right. any American president who conducted right. any fair. action, including Vietnam and Korea. They could not have predicted the consequences. Fair. I do say you don't get to be the president of America if you allow yourself to be bullied. Yeah. I don't it's think any good. American president would ever allow themselves to be bullied. I can't imagine any of them. Even Jerry Ford. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he still made it to president, so he has to have some kind of a killer right. somewhere. You would think. Right. Jerry Ford has a, a, a reputation for being kind of soft, and but but I don't think necessarily that was necessarily true. He um, does a great impersonation of Chevy Chase, I hear too. So you don't get that, okay? Because <laughs> Chevy Chase did him in the right, show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an extremely ineffective president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now it's time. Let's do this new thing. Of course, I meant what's new. Sorry. What's new <laughs> is, so is the part of the show. It's so close where, every time. I know. <laughs> what's new is the part of the show where we, just before the show, we put the words CIA or FBI into Google. Mm -hmm. We hit the news tab and see what glorious new information is going to come up, like right when, just before we started recording yeah. this podcast, right? So I have some stuff about the CIA, and you have some stuff about the FBI. Do you want to go first? Sure. Go. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, FBI informant testifies for the defense in the January 6th Proud Boys trial. For the defense? Yep. Go on. Uh, an FBI informant, uh, March to the Capitol, Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. The informant who identified himself uh, ah. in court as Aaron was a defense witness for the trial of former Proud Boys leader, oh, geez, Enrique Terrio, and four yeah. of his lieutenants. Uh, that's fun. Uh, charged with sedition, conspiracy, uh, yes, for what the prosecution, 
And he was, um, but the FBI guy was on their side. Uh, the informant uh, was communicating with his FBI handler as a mob of Trump uh, supporters uh, breached the Capitol. Quote, barriers down to the Capitol building. Crowd surge forward almost to the building now. Uh, Rich of the Proud Boys uh, did not do it nor inspire. The crowd did not, uh, the crowd did as herd mentality, not organized. Oh, oh, this is bullshit. Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay. Yeah, no, this is some bullshit. What he was doing. Okay. Yeah, this is some got? bullshit. Okay. Anywho, well, just to back on that, I mean, we heard that this shit was going to happen like weeks before it happened. Yeah. I heard this. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not in touch with any of these fuckers. You know, it was all over the internet. This was a mm-hmm. plan. Fuck off. Anyways, uh, U.S. warrants uh, requirement for surveillance program could hamper cyber case FBI officials warrants. So they're getting oh, upset. Uh, the FBI yeah. is saying that the FBI doesn't have enough power. Yeah, they're saying, you know, Surprise. you want us, you want us to get want more power. You want us to get warrants? Yes. You know, actually show cause? That's Cops horrible. always want more power. They want the biggest machine guns you can get, and they want all the powers from all the judges. So that's you can just ignore that. Uh, FBI whistleblower protections may finally caught up with obama ear policy changes. So, Go on. Uh, the Justice Department also wants to know how it can further increase fairness, effective, effectiveness, uh, efficiency and transparency for whistleblowers. Uh, the FBI supports the right of whistleblowers to bring forward concerns of wasted fraud and abuse. Okay. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, this is this one might be a little bit muggy. This because, is quite yeah, because a lot of the whistleblower shit uh, kind of got blown up under Obama. Yes. Uh, wh- whether or not you could say Obama and his administration were directly involved in that or just happened to be there at the mm. time, that's a whole other argument too. But uh, yeah, Edward so, Snowden scared a lot of people. Snowden and uh, shit. I'm sorry. I, can't, I blanked on the name. The gentleman, Chelsea Manning, uh, Chelsea Manning for one. And then also um, Julian Assange. The, ge- the gentleman that's in uh, prison still for Julian Assange. No, this other gentleman. Hale's his last name. He exposed okay. uh, the uh, drone program and how uh, okay. inefficient it is in killing uh, hmm. more civilians than targets. So we might we might be doing an episode on that eventually. I don't okay. know. We'll see. That's all I got, brother. Okay. All right, let's look at some CIA stuff. Now, I have to be honest and say that I was tooling around online when I wrote the script for this. So this next CIA-related news story is not 100% new. It's about two days old, but it's too good. Fair so enough. I have Fair to enough. do this, right? It says, a clandestine trip and a four-decade secret, an untold story behind Jimmy Carter's defeat. Ooh. And the, uh, quest, the thing here is... Uh, where are we? What happened next? Uh, Mr. Barnes was largely kept secret for the next 43 years. This is directly related to the thing I told you about, saying that Jimmy Carter was rolling into an election year. Uh, Mr. Connolly, he said, took him to one Middle Eastern capital after another that summer, meeting with a host of regional leaders to deliver a blunt message to be passed to Iran. Do not release the hostages before the election. Mr. Reagan will win and give you a better deal. Wow. So the Americans that's, that's, are screwing themselves yeah. on that. That sounds exactly what uh, Kissinger uh, did uh, with the yeah. Nixon and uh, the Vietnam thing. Yes, very oh, cynical. Yeah. Keep the war going. Yeah, N- do not make the hostages. God damn it! I can't think of who uh, who is running against. Who's Nixon running against then? Uh, Jim McGovern, George McGovern. Was it McGovern? No. Hum- not Humphrey. Not yeah, it, was, was it? it was Humphrey. It was oh, Hubert Humphrey? Might have been Humphrey. Okay. Yeah, but I know he was running against McGovern in the second thing, and McGovern fucked himself. Yeah fairly aggressively <laughs> yeah um yeah so this is something that um character had su- uh, had suspected for a long time that there would be uh, that reagan uh, reagan's people were making a real effort to make sure that the iran crisis was being prolonged artificially to make carter look bad yeah. and it did make carter look bad and a lot of voters turned against carter for the way he was handling the iran crisis but he did not realize oh, that, yeah. he wasn't, that he wasn't fighting against the Iran crisis. He was fighting against the Reagan camp all along, according to this. Anyway, look up the story if you want. Yeah. I remember being told this as a kid, too, that, you know, mm-hmm. this kind of uh, false narrative that, oh, yeah, you know, those those kids, they weren't scared of, of Carter at all, but Susan, yeah. uh, Reagan came in power. Ooh, yeah. Oh, they That's got scared. Thing. They That's let him out because they yeah. knew they were going to get bombed, man, because, you that know. Absolute bullshit. Yeah, because, you know, everybody, you know, equates 
Ronald Reagan with John fucking Wayne, man. He was, a, yeah. you know, he, he was a hard ass, you know, serving the military out of in, some serious in WW2 yeah. from Burbank Studios. You know, he spent all that time behind the lines. The USC uh, mafia calls that rat fucking. Mm -hmm. Dirty tricks to win elections. That's some That's serious exactly. rat fucking. To take a plane yeah. to the Middle East and tell everybody, do not release the hostages. Yeah, that's how that's how much Reagan loves Americans. He's happy enough yep. to let them rot as long as he wins an election. Uh, anyway, another headline I saw was, and this is a uh, one that I did actually find just before the recording. A Spanish funny. company provided CIA with information leading to Julian Sanchez's arrest, and the operative paragraph here is, um, where are we? I can find it. Ah, Vallejo, Vallejo had hired the services of this small company from Jerez de la Frontera in southwestern Spain to provide security for Ecuador's diplomatic corps in London, but didn't know that it was planning to record his meeting with Assange. Vallejo was mm. unaware that UC Global had planted hidden microphones throughout the embassy, even in the women's bathroom. Oh, jeez. Because sometimes you just have to know what the ladies are doing in there, don't you? Right, yeah. Anyway, that's that's another story you can look up if you should do if you want to know more about it. And my last one is, in Sri Lanka, opposition parties allege a secret CIA visit. And the, the, the TLDR on that is, uh, the Communist Party of Sri Lanka has demanded that the government clarify whether William Burns, head of the US CIA, made a secret visit to the country last month, and if so, to explain what was discussed with him. And then in, the last, in my last um, CIA news thing on what's new, uh, yeah. William Burns was in Libya, if you recall. So the man's doing yep. a tour of all the different countries for some reason, and we may never find out. And again, it's up to the communists to ask the question. That's it. That's all I have for you today. That's what's new. Sounds like somebody's been calling for a jihad. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Like a little too close to, like not so much a joke, and maybe the reality. Yeah. 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 What the fuck, man? What well, that's the our fuck? show. That's our show today. I think. All right, folks. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks, right? So I think that is. Uh, thank you. Thank else. you. Bye, guys.